Hi dear students, welcome to Kavita's Neat Classes. In this lecture, we shall discuss a topic, Cell Cycle. Whether it is a unicellular organism or a multicellular organism, every cell undergoes cell division. There are two important characteristics of every cell that is cell growth and cell division. And it is because of these characteristics of cell growth and cell division that a single cell is capable of giving rise to a huge organism composed of several cells. Take the example of us human beings. A sperm fertilizes the ovum to give rise to a single cell called zygote. The zygote undergoes repeated cell division leading to the formation of an embryo which further undergoes again divisions giving rise to a fetus, baby and so on. So cell growth and cell division are very essential for growth of an organism. So how is it that a single cell can give rise to a huge population of cells? One cell divides into two. Say this is the parent cell. It divides into two daughter cells. Now these daughter cells further undergo division giving rise to four cells. So each newly formed cell becomes a parent cell and it gives rise to two daughter cells. Those daughter cells again become parent cells and they give rise to daughter cells again. So this process of cell growth and cell division continues several times to give rise to huge population of cells which leads to organisms. Right? Now, what is it that happens in the cell? That is, what are the stages or what are the steps that occur in the cell that enables it to grow, become huge, almost double its size and then divide into two daughter cells. So, the set of events that occur in the parent cell for it to grow in size and to divide into two daughter cells is called as cell cycle. Okay, in simple terms understand, if a cell has to divide, it has to undergo a lot of processes within itself. It has to replicate its DNA, it has to uh, increase its size, it has to synthesize organelles. So all of these activities or events which are happening within the parent cell so that it is finally prepared to divide into two. So what are those events? Those events or stages or steps is what we call it as cell cycle. So we will be discussing in depth about this in this lecture. So, Cells divide into new daughter cells through a series of events that take place in steps. The products formed in each round replicate the process for the next round. And a cell cycle is thus a sequence of events that a cell goes through as it grows and divides to produce new cells. Hence, it is also called as the life cycle of the cell. So, for a cell to be able to divide and produce two daughter cells, what are all the stages, what are all the steps it goes through? So how it grows, what are the, uh, what are the activities which happen during the growth phase? What are the activities which happens during the synthesis phase where the replication of DNA happens? So all these stages and all these steps put together that a cell has to undergo for its division into two daughter cells is called as cell cycle. Hence, we also call it as the life cycle of the cell. So cell cycle can also be called as life cycle of the cell. We discuss the various stages of the cell cycle. It's better if you can know a little bit about haploid cells and diploid cells. So we have two kinds of cells in our body, isn't it? We have the somatic cells and we have the gametes or the gametic cells. Isn't it? 
So somatic cells are nothing but the body cells. And gametic cells are reproductive cells. So what are the gametic cells in us? So in males, the gametic cells are sperm, isn't it? In females, the gametic cell is ovum or ova right so these gametic cells are haploid in nature what we mean by haploid that is they have a single set of chromosome okay which we represent by a small n in brackets did you understand what we mean by haploid haploid means they have a single set of chromosome now coming back to the somatic cells the somatic cells are body cells they are present throughout our body and these cells are diploid in nature diploid means they have two sets of chromosome which we represent by 2n what do we mean by diploidy that is the body cells have two sets of chromosomes one set coming from the father and one set coming from the mother got it so we are speaking with respect to human beings here so diploid means two set of chromosome one set coming from the father and one set coming from the mother so what will be the total number of chromosomes here it will be 46 chromosomes whereas what is the total number of chromosomes in gametic cells it is 23 chromosomes that is they have only a single set of chromosome this understanding will be helpful for you to understand the lecture further. So somatic cells are diploid in nature that is they have two sets of chromosome and gametic cells or the sex cells or the gametes as we call it are haploid in nature that is they have a single set of chromosome. During the division of a cell DNA replication and cell growth happens. So the processes of cell division, DNA replication and cell growth has to happen in a coordinated manner, in a proper manner so that there is correct division of the cell organelles and also the genetic material between two daughter cells and this sequence of events which makes sure that the cell duplicates its genome, synthesizes the other constituents of the cell and eventually gives an equal proportion of the constituents to both the daughter cells is called as cell cycle. So we have a parent cell which is dividing and giving rise to two daughter cells. Now if it has to give equal quantities of genetic material and other cellular constituents to each of them then the cell has to grow in size and it also has to make twice the amount of genetic material that it already has. So this process of cell growth, replication of DNA and the division of the parent cell into two daughter cells making sure that both the daughter cells are getting equal amount of genetic material and other cell constituents has to be in a coordinated manner and this is called as the cell cycle. Events happening in a cell cycle are genetically controlled. Okay, So whatever events that are happening during a cell cycle so what are the activities which happen during the cell cycle the growth of the cell the replication of the dna and also the cell division these are the three important prime activities which happen during the cell cycle all these three happen in a coordinated manner and it is controlled genetically so now you might ask okay if that is the case how long does it take for one cell to divide into two daughter cells so this again varies from organism to organism. So if you take the example of yeast, if you have one cell of yeast, within 90 minutes, it will give rise to two daughter yeast cells. That is one hour 30 minutes or 90 minutes. So with one yeast cell, with one yeast cell, you can get two yeast daughter cells within a span of 90 minutes. Whereas in human beings, the duration is 24 hours. So every single cell in our body, if it has to divide into two daughter cells, it takes 24 hours. And even among that, 
the interface okay i'll be discussing about interface shortly the interface is the longest phase which takes around 95 percent of the time okay whereas the actual cell division which is called as the m phase just takes around one hour only okay i'll be discussing that shortly now the cell cycle i already told you what is the cell cycle the growth of the cell the replication of the dna and the cell division all of these occur in a coordinated manner so that the parent cell is capable of dividing into two daughter cells and giving equal quantities of genetic material and other cellular components both to the to both the daughter cells so the cell cycle has different phases there are two important phases of cell cycle first one is the interface and second one is the m phase so here you can see in this picture this entire circle from here to here this is the interface whereas this is the m phase or the mitotic phase so the cell cycle can be divided into two phases one is the interface and the second one is the m phase or it is also called as the mitosis phase so what is the interface initially during your lower classes in primary or middle school you must have been taught that interface is the resting stage of the cell isn't it actually that is not true interface is the phase where the cell is actively preparing itself for the actual cell division which happens during the m phase got it so just like how you are preparing for the examination isn't it the examination happens just for three hours at the end of the academic year but for that three hour examination you are preparing you are putting in efforts for one entire year you are reading you are revising you are solving questions so you are making so much of preparation for that one exam which you are going to take up for three hours on the day of the examination isn't it well, at the end of the academic year so this entire stage where you are preparing for the exam can be considered as interface whereas the day of examination where you exactly take the examination for three hours that can be considered as mitosis or uh, mitotic phase or the m phase mitosis phase okay this is just for your understanding please do not take real meanings for this okay so the cell cycle can be divided into interface and m phase interface is the phase where the cell is actively preparing for the cell division so it is during the interface that the cell will grow the replication of the dna happens the synthesis of the histone proteins and once again growth all these activities happen during the interface stage whereas the m phase or the mitosis phase this stage is the one where actual cell division happens so this m phase hardly takes around one hour okay so i told you in human beings the duration of cell cycle is 24 hours so out of this 24 hours just one hour goes into the actual cell division whereas the rest of the time goes into interface that is for the cell to prepare for cell division okay further interface can be divided into g1 phase s phase and g2 phase interface so i told you interface is not a resting stage interface is not a resting stage of the cell in fact it is a active stage in this stage the cell is metabolically active so the cell grows it doubles in size the replication of the dna happens okay all these activities are happening during the interface so interface is the duration between one m phase to the next m phase so when a cell enters a newly formed cell first it enters into interface then go through mito m phase and then again it go through interface so say there is a cell first it goes through interface then it goes through mitosis phase and then it gives rise to two daughter cells okay now these two daughter cells will again go through interface then they will again go through mitosis phase and they will give rise to two daughter cells each i hope you understood right 
so one cell goes through entire cycle of cell division including interphase and m phase and it gives rise to two daughter cells and these two daughter cells again go through interphase and m phase to give rise to two daughter cells each and this cycle continues okay so interphase is the time lapse between the two successive phases of cell division it is during this interphase stage that the cell prepares for the cell division it prepares for cell division it grows and also dna replication takes place during the interphase stage and interphase can be further divided into three different stages of g1 phase s phase and g2 phase i already told you this entire stretch of the cell cycle is interphase whereas only this stretch marked in yellow this is the m phase or the mitosis phase where the exact cell division happens so this entire interphase can be further divided into three different stages which is g1 s and g2 first let's uh, let's discuss g1 phase so here g stands for growth right so g1 phase is also called as gap phase also you can call it as g1 phase or gap phase so it is the gap between previous mitosis and the dna replication of the next cycle so this region here okay this part of interphase is g1 phase so what happens during the g1 phase the g1 phase is the longest phase of interphase so under g1 under interphase we have g1 s and g2 three different phases are there under interphase out of that g1 is the longest phase so this can also be asked as a question in your examination so g1 is the longest phase during which cell actually grows so the cell is metabolically active and it grows and it becomes twice the size however it does not replicate its dna this is very very important and it has been asked in your previous year questions many times okay so please do not forget this replication of dna does not happen in the g1 phase replication of dna happens in the s phase which is called as a synthesis phase so keep this in mind and which is the longest phase the longest phase is g1 okay here though the cell is metabolically active and it is continuously growing the replication of dna does not happen in g1 then uh, a large number of nucleotides amino acids synthesis of histone proteins all of these also occur during the g1 phase so now please do not expect questions very simple questions so if asked a question what are the different stages of interphase anybody can answer the question under options if you have g1 s and g2 yes anybody can mark whereas your examiner will not make such easy questions if he wants to make the question stuff he will tend to pick up few hints here and there which usually students ignore say for example the histone proteins many students might just ignore this thinking okay it is not that much important let me just remember that g1 is the phase during which the growth of the cell occurs however the replication of dna does not occur and they will ignore this point altogether that is the synthesis of the histone proteins however this itself has been asked particularly in one year in neat examination they have asked the synthesis of the histone proteins occurs in which phase of cell cycle g1 s2 uh, g1 s g2 or m phase okay then you will get confused whether it is in g1 or s or g2 so please give attention to detail while you are preparing for your examination when you are appearing for a competitive examination it becomes all the more important okay so do not ignore such important details here and there fine the second stage the second stage of say, interphase okay the second stage of interphase that is here this region of the interphase marked in green is the s phase s phase is also called as synthesis phase so s phase or the synthesis phase the most important activity which happens in this phase is replication of dna or dna replication so here 
DNA replication is very very important and many times it has been asked in the examination uh, asking in which stage of the cell cycle does DNA replication happen G1, S, G2, M phase. So it is only in S phase that replication of DNA occurs and not in G1, not in G2, not in M phase. Okay, so please do not get confused. So it is the S phase during which DNA replication happens and the DNA content of the cell doubles over here. So whatever genetic material DNA that is present, it becomes twice. However, the chromosome number remains the same. So this is also a very important question asked in previous years. Keep this in mind. Though the quantity of DNA becomes twice, okay, say you have this much of DNA in the cell, after the S phase you will have twice the amount of that DNA. However, the chromosome number is still the same. The chromosome number does not become twice. Okay, please keep this point. This is very important. Keep this point in mind. So, though the genetic material DNA, the amount of DNA becomes twice, the chromosome number still remains the same. Say for example, when the DNA, suppose it, uh, the DNA that is present in the cell initially is 2C, after S phase it will become 4C. You have questions like this also. So, if your examiner will give a question. So, if the initial amount of DNA before the cell is entering S phase is 2C, what will be the amount of DNA after uh, it is finishing the S phase? And they will give you options or they will give you options like after the S phase, the number of chromosomes will remain the same. The number of chromosomes will become uh, double. Okay. And uh, during the S phase, it is the DNA replication which happens and the content of the DNA doubles. So which among this is the right answer option? Or they might ask you a question like in the S phase, what are the activities which take place? So first uh, option will be DNA replication and second option will be the DNA content of the cell doubles and third option will be the chromosome number remains the same and the fourth option will be the chromosome number becomes double. So now they will ask you choose the wrong option among this. Choose a point which does not happen during S phase. So what does not happen? The number of chromosomes does not increase. It remains the same. So fourth option will be the right option. Whereas the other three that is DNA replication and the content of DNA doubles and chromosome number remains the same. All of these are the right answer options. Okay. Fine. So if initial amount of DNA is 2C. Okay. After the S phase it will become 4C. Okay. If the cell had diploid or 2n number of chromosomes at G1, even after S phase, the number of chromosomes still remains 2n. This is what I told you. The chromosome number does not change. Only the quantity of DNA uh, becomes double. However, the chromosome number still remains the same. And in animal cells, the S phase, during the S phase, the DNA replication begins in the nucleus. Okay, and the centriole duplicates in the cytoplasm. So this has also been asked as a question earlier. So in which stage of cell cycle can you find the duplication of the centriole happening? Is it in G1, S, G2? It is in S phase. So please do not ignore such details which most of the students tend to ignore and they get confused in the examination. So it is during the S phase that the DNA replication happens in the nucleus and the duplication of the centrioles happen in the cytoplasm. Now moving on to the third phase of interface that is G2. So first one is G1, second one is S and the third phase is the G2 which also stands for growth 2 phase right or you can also call it as gap 2 phase. So what happens during this phase, again during this phase, the cell continues to grow and prepare for the cell division and protein synthesis also occurs during this stage. Okay. So in the first stage also, in G1 also, it is predominantly growth and in the S phase, the primary function is DNA replication and G2, again there is growth of the cell and it is preparing itself for the M phase which is the cell division phase. So there are uh, many cells in our human body 
which do not divide. So what happens to such cells? Say for example, the heart cells. Heart cells usually do not divide. Very rarely or very occasionally they divide in, uh, in occasions such as if there is a uh, injured, suppose some uh, cells have got injured, then they have to replace new cells in that region, then the heart cells will divide or suppose some cells are dead. Only in those circumstances when there is an injury or when there is a death of a cell, the heart cells will divide. However, normally the heart cells do not divide. So what will happen to these cells? If they do not divide, how do they stop? How does the, how is the cell division arrested? So what happens is these cells do not further divide and they will exit the G1 phase to enter an inactive stage called as the G0 or the quiescent stage of the cell. So this is also very important from your examination point of view. So we have various cells in our body which do not keep dividing repeatedly. They have sufficient amount of cells, they will not divide any further. Okay. So one such example is the heart cell. So unless there is an injury or unless there is a death of a cell, they will not divide. So these cells, they will stop once they exit the G1 phase. They enter into a phase called as G0. So G0 is an inactive stage. It is a quiescent stage of the cell where they do not undergo any further cell division or they do not enter into the cell cycle anymore. Got it? Did you understand G0 stage? Then in uh, animals, the mitotic cell division, you can see only in the somatic cells, isn't it? So mitosis happens only in somatic cells, whereas in gametic cells, meiosis happens. And mitosis is called as equational cell division and meiosis is called as reductional cell division. Next moving on to the last stage of the cell cycle which is M phase. So this entire was interphase and this part of the cell cycle is M phase or the mitosis phase which is the actual phase where the cell divides. So here you will have various stages of mitosis like prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase where majorly division of the nucleus occurs. So division of the nucleus is called as karyokinesis. Karyon means nuclei or nucleus. So karyokinesis means division of the nucleus. Then it is followed by cytokinesis. Cyto means cytoplasm. Okay, cyto means cytoplasm. So division of the cytoplasm is called as cytokinesis. So overall during the M phase what happens is the cell is going into the actual phase of cell division where it goes through stages of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase during which division of the nucleus occur and then finally it will be followed by the stage of cytokinesis during which division of the cytoplasm occurs. So this completes one cycle. So after cytokinesis, the cell would have, the parent cell would have got divided into two daughter cells. Got it? So initially one cell goes through one entire cell cycle which includes G1, S, G2 and M phase. So after it goes through all of those phases, it will give rise to two daughter cells and these daughter cells again goes through all the events of the cell cycle and gives rise to two daughter cells. Each one of them give rise to two daughter cells again. So this keeps happening. Okay. So I hope you understood this topic cell cycle properly. I will also be discussing the questions which have been asked from the cell cycle topic in the previous year NEET examinations in the next lecture. So until I meet you in the next lecture, take care and you can also connect with me on the social media. Until then, take care, have a good day.